I, I'd, I always like to start a meeting with a scripture reading. So I'm hoping that someone has their Bible real handy and will read Genesis 2, chapter 2, 1 through 3. And I always do that even when I teach at the seminary. I always start with a scripture verse because I say, if everything else goes wrong, the rest of the hour, we've at least heard holy words. And so let's start. Summon as soon as you have it, read Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. This comes at the end of the first chapter where God for six days has created all matter and all life. And now this is the seventh, the record of the seventh day, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Does anyone have it? Just start reading. Unmute yourself. Are you shy? Should I read it? I was hoping to someone else would read it. Okay, I can read it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Good. Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Oh, beautiful. Thank you very much. What did you hear repeated here? There were several phrases that were repeated more than once. Did you hear that? What's repeated? I'll give you a clue. The seventh day is repeated three times. Now, the rest of the week, the, it, it, the evening and morning were the first day, and this evening and morning were the second day, and all the way through, it's the evening and morning were the first day, the second day, and it's repeated, it says stated once. But when it comes to the Sabbath, the seventh day is repeated three times, and that's the way the ancients would emphasize something. Now, today on computer language, when you want to emphasize something, you put in italics or you bold it, or if you're writing something, you underline it in red, but they didn't have that then. So if they wanted to make something, emphasize something, they'd repeat it three times. The seventh day. So God was setting it apart. All the other days were good and very good, but now the seventh day gets special emphasis. And notice it takes more verbs to create the Sabbath than it did any other day of the week. There's three verbs. What are they? What are the three verbs connected with the Sabbath? He blessed it. Sanctified. He it. Sanctified. He sanctified it. And he rested. All the other days, there were only one verb or maybe two. But now this Sabbath day is so special. It has three verbs. What does it mean when God blesses something? It doesn't wave a magic wand. And you know, the Bible interprets itself. So you have to get the blessing. What, what is something? Blesses something. Remember when, when some women couldn't, couldn't um, conceive, God blessed her womb and she could conceive. So when God is blessing something, he's enabling it to accomplish what it should do. He's enabling the Sabbath to accomplish something. And he rested. Does that mean God said, phew, I'm so tired after creating, I've got to collapse and rest. No, no, that's not what it means. It's a, in, the, in the original language, it just means resting in satisfaction from a job well done. So God, he wasn't oh, fatigued. He was just resting. You know, have you, when you make something and it turns out right, and you just say, oh, this just is right. I like to make bread. And I know that in Michigan here with the humidity and sometimes affects the working of the yeast. And so I, when I make it, I make a whole bunch of loaves at once and put it in the freezer. So, because it's not always just perfect, but every now and then it's just right. And I, and I, the house is filled, filled with this wonderful smell. And I say, oh, this is good. This is good. And that's the kind of feeling that God is expressing in this resting. Oh, this is so good. It turned out so good. And what does it mean when God sanctifies something? What does that mean? What is the biblical definition of sanctifying? To make it holy. Make it holy. And how? Do, what, what does making something holy do to it? Not a, it's not a hocus pocus thing. It's a setting apart for a special use. A setting apart. When God's sanctifying us, he's setting us apart for a very special purpose. And fulfilling his dreams for our lives or for this day. So the Sabbath 
is in, in the creation story in Genesis is set apart in a unique way to tell us how important it is. And those very three verbs in Genesis 2, 1 to 3 are picked up in the fourth commandment of the Decalogue. Those ver three same verbs telling that God did this on the seventh day. A marvelous picture. And Seventh-day Adventists believe that the Sabbath is so important that we put it in our name. We're not just Adventists waiting for Jesus to come. We're Seventh-day Adventists. And, you know, different churches have done that. You know that the Baptist church calls themselves Baptist because they're naming themselves out of the great Anabaptist tradition that restored believer baptism to the church as opposed to infant baptism. And so the Baptist church today believes that was such an important doctrine that they put, they named themselves after it. Well, Seventh-day Adventists believe that the Sabbath is so extraordinary and so important, we put it in our name. We're not just Adventists, we're Seventh-day Adventists. Now, we are right that the Bible teaches that the seventh day is the Sabbath. We're right. And it starts out right here because of Genesis 2, 1 to 3, how it's emphasized in the Bible. And because of that instruction, we honor the day by worshiping and not working. And yet, and here I think is the heart of the matter. Are we really keeping the Sabbath? Are we really? Now, some Adventists have determined that you must keep the Sabbath to be saved. And this suggests to me, whenever I hear this, that maybe we need to have some further study about both the Sabbath and salvation. For example, is keeping the Sabbath more than just knowing the right day? Is there more involved than just knowing the right day? What about God's call in Isaiah 58 to call the Sabbath a delight? What about that? Is that important? Is delighting in the Sabbath part of keeping the Sabbath? Or is the Sabbath something that must be kept in order to be saved? Uh, let's, let's look at it this way. When Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day of creation week, they hadn't sinned yet. They hadn't sinned. It was still a perfect world, and yet God gave them the Sabbath. So that tells us that Adam and Eve were not keeping the Sabbath to try to be saved. They got it before they sinned. It wasn't something that God put in place after they sinned. It was part of that perfect world that God set up. And if Adam and Eve had never sinned, we would still have the Sabbath. Still have it. Adam and Eve's first full day was fellowship with their creator. Can you just hear, you know, Friday afternoon, they're both created and God performs the wedding and they've named the animals. And then God said, and tomorrow, and go, and then God told them their work, that work would be to tend and care for the garden. And they said, but tomorrow we're going to rest. And can't, I just like to imagine it went, the conversation might have gone something like this. And Adam and Eve would say, but we haven't worked yet. And God said, that's the point. I want you to rest first before you work. You rest in my finished work. And that puts, when, I, when I first saw that, that put a whole different flavor on the Sabbath for me. A whole different flavor. And the Sabbath still gives us this time. 24 hours with our creator. Our creator who is now also our redeemer but when he first gave the sabbath there was no sin he gave it as it it was just to be a blessing a blessing now when jesus comes later it'll be it's important for us to study how he related to the sabbath and we're going to do that tomorrow morning for church study how jesus related to the day he created and we can learn some important things about the sabbath then too and one thing we'll notice is that he tried to remove the restrictions that the religious leaders had put in place about the Sabbath. He didn't try to change the day, but he, he, he showed that sometimes it's, we get the wrong ideas and put the wrong rules in place. And he, he looked at Jesus' example to see what the Sabbath is really all about. 
Why do sometimes Adventists think it is necessary to keep the Sabbath to be saved instead of saying, I want to receive this divine gift every week and receive it as a gift? You know, salvation is a gift too. Salvation is a gift. There's nothing we can do to earn it. Nothing. Jesus gives it. And it's the same thing with the Sabbath. We don't have to earn it. It's something Jesus wants to give us. An extraordinary gift of time. See, Jesus shows us creation week that he's creator of all life and all matter. And he's sovereign over time. He's sovereign. And he took those first seven days and bent it into a week. And that st st has stood ever since, ever since. And, and if you read anything from anthropologists, they find this seven day week everywhere around the world, no matter what people group, no matter what continent, no matter what century, the seven day week has just been stabilized throughout history. Yeah, there've been times the Mayans tried to invent a, 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 a different, a, a different uh, time schedule and during World War II they tried to change the schedule a little bit but it always comes back to this seven day week that God put in place because God's sovereign over time itself don't you wish you could get a hold of time I mean we can play around with matter and God gives husbands and wives a chance to create life and their children but time we can't get a hold of it and yet God shows I'm sovereign even over time itself Perhaps it's sometimes difficult for us Adventists to recognize we're still trying to earn salvation rather than receive it as a gift. And maybe that's why we have a hard time thinking we have to earn salvation. But you see, the Sabbath and salvation both speak of the same gift. They both do. Remember, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith in Hebrews 2. We don't have to work to earn Sabbath rest. This proves that God is not a tyrant and we are not his slaves. We don't have to work to earn a day off. Rather, each week we are invited to receive the Sabbath blessing from our creator. How much have we lost by not recognizing this time as a special fellowship to be with Jesus? Why do some Adventists think the Sabbath is a duty you have to do to please God rather than receive it as a gift? The prophet Isaiah, as we already mentioned, talks about God inviting us to call the Sabbath a delight. Unfortunately, the verse, right, the line just before that has sometimes kept us from appreciating this, not doing your own pleasure on my holy day. And we never even get to the part about delight. And I'll never forget when I first was explained by a Jewish friend in Israel. We, my husband and I have lived in Israel for a while while he was studying Hebrew there. And a Jewish friend, we were trying to impress him that we kept the Sabbath, too, as Christians. And so he, we had this wonderful conversation. And he said, for you, when does Sabbath begin? And we said, oh, sundown. Torah is very clear at sundown. Said, oh, no, it's much better than that. He said, Sabbath starts coming in all Friday afternoon. And by sundown, it's all here. And he showed us the anticipation of the Sabbath is so, so rich, so rich. Delight. How do you delight in the Sabbath when you can't do anything that's of your own pleasure? Well, our Jewish friend explained to us, you know, that word pleasure in English is not so good. He said that same word is used up in the beginning of chapter 58, talking about your daily work and your employees and your, and your work. Because God hopes you have pleasure in your work. This, the, not doing your own pleasure, they read that verse like this, not doing your daily work on my holy day. And then call the Sabbath a delight. We never even get there as Adventists often. We're so worried about not doing our own pleasure and, and misunderstanding what the word is all about. Our work, our daily work. And God says, let it go. Let it go. And call the Sabbath a delight. And fascinating, there's um, 12 words in the original language that are rightly translated delight, rightly. And each one increases the intensity of the delight until this one, and called the Sabbath of delight, is the highest form of the verb, of the word, meaning royal delight. It's only used of kings and queens in their palaces in, in, in the Bible. And one Jewish writer who saw that 
calls the Sabbath a palace in time, a palace in time. Wherever you are in the world, you can leave off your work. Never mind that it isn't done. Our work is never done. Pick it up next week and for one week be restored in the presence of your creator and your redeemer in his palace in time. Having a delightful Sabbath is a lot different than the Sabbath being something we should do, something we should do. And that's the lesson we can be growing and learning each week as the Sabbath comes. God says, I, I, I hope you like your work. Work, see, work is part of the blessing too. Work was given to Adam and Eve before they sinned, just like Sabbath. Oh, and blessed are those who love their work. But then the Sabbath comes and there's something even better than the work that we do. We rest in God's finished work. See, God asks us to take off 52 days a year and rest with him. Rest with him. The more I learn about the Sabbath, the more I, I learn about God's love and compassion. See, Sabbath is meant to be a refuge, not a burden, not a prison. It's not so much we keep the Sabbath as the Sabbath keeps us close to Jesus. The Pharisees tried to guard it with many rules, and we'll talk about some of those tomorrow morning. They had over 600 rules for keeping the Sabbath. Now, Wanting to guard the Sabbath is a good thing. I'm not diminishing that. And please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we shouldn't guard the Sabbath. But the motive should be so we don't miss a minute. We guard it so carefully because it's such a treasure. And we don't want to miss any of its rich blessing to come. If we just have rules, we may never enter the joy of the Sabbath. In fact, a Jewish writer wrote this. If all you think about is what you should or should not do on the Sabbath. You've never entered the joy of the Sabbath. And that hit me hard. Because I, I, I've loved Jesus. And I believe the seventh day is the Sabbath. But so much of my life I was trying to prove to Jesus I loved him by keeping the Sabbath. Rather than let Jesus blessing me. Pushing things out of my life so there's more room for Jesus to bless me. Our need for the Sabbath is not to remind us of our sinfulness, but to bring restoration. Just as we were created to breathe and to eat and to sleep and to work, we were created from the foundation of the world to receive Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest is no sign of weakness. God loves the Sabbath and he certainly is not weak. See, violating the Sabbath is not like breaking a, a, a very slow speed limit in a residential area or going well past the speed limit on a freeway or no police car is around. It is more like the law of gravity. Now, we can voluntarily try to break the law of gravity, but it won't work. It won't work. The law of gravity will always win. We can try to break God's other laws, but eventually they'll break us too. We can violate the commandments, but doing so will have grave consequences, including the Sabbath. Think of all the laws of, that God set in place when he created, the laws of chemistry and the laws of biology and the laws of physics that God set in place. He also set in place the law of gravity. It's not a law that scientists have devised. It's actually part of reality. We need to obey gravity. It's the law. Gravity is. Our belief or disbelief in gravity will not invalidate it or make it disappear. Gravity will always win. Just so with the sap. The fourth commandment in the Decalogue is just like the law of gravity. Our, our ideas can't change it. We need its blessing. Animals need it. God included them in the fourth commandment. Remember, you, you probably know the fourth commandment by memory, and it includes the cattle. They deserve a rest. Even the land needs it. Remember, God gave a sabbatical for the land every seven years so it can rest too. See, we may choose to ignore the Sabbath 
we can, we have freedom to do this. But after a while, like gravity, it will, it will be dangerous to us if we try to defy gravity and defy the Sabbath. If we honestly look at our busy, frantic schedules, the truth remains. If we don't rest, in the course of time, our, our physical health, even our mental health, and especially our spiritual health will suffer. And we'll pay a hefty price for ignoring this blessing God wants to give. When we do accept the blessing of the Sabbath, we will experience something wonderful. Because the need is built right into us. Jesus stated he's Lord of the Sabbath. And that his rest will restore us. See, Sabbath rest and healing are synonymous in God's vocabulary. If we allow ourselves to enter the Sabbath and rest, it will be just like entering Eden again. Ellen White says it that way. I love the way she says this. She refers to the blessed days of the Garden of Eden, she writes, when God pronounced all things very good. Then she writes, marriage and the Sabbath had their origin. Twin institutions for the glory of God and for the benefit of humanity. That which the Eternal Father proclaimed good now, guess this phrase she calls the law of the highest blessing. Had you thought of that? A law of blessing. And that's what the Sabbath is. A law of the highest blessing. Have you ever had the experience of giving someone a gift and sense that you didn't get the right thing and they don't? really appreciate it you can tell they, they're being nice but you can tell they don't really appreciate it well see god gave his human family the generous gift of sabbath time and yet we don't often know how to receive it instead we make it into another yoke of works it's not that we don't love god it's just we find it hard to take time to rest in him we can be very busy working, even working for him and miss hearing his heartbeat. We know Jesus is the creator and he's also Lord of the Sabbath. Every seven days, we are invited to exit all our problems and rest in Jesus. He even tells us how deep is the Sabbath blessing. Remember, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then he concludes by saying, and you will find rest unto your souls, your souls. And you know, in Matthew 11, when Jesus gives that promise, the very next narrative that's connected to that statement of Jesus is a Sabbath incident in Jesus' life, which points out that this rest that he's talking about in Matthew 11 is Sabbath rest. And he tells us that the deep blessings of the Sabbath will rest even into our souls. Perhaps it's hard to receive the Sabbath when we talk about it in the negative so much. You know, you can't work on the Sabbath. How much better if we would state the principle in a positive way, the same principle, but in a positive way. I don't have to work on the Sabbath. I don't have to. Rather than you don't dare, but I don't have to. I don't have to. Sabbath is sometimes kept with the attitude of doing stuff for God rather than being with God. Having decided that working for God is what Sabbath is all about. For some, perhaps, it isn't so much wrong intentions that cause the loss of Sabbath joy as it is from never having learned or found its blessing. The gift of the Sabbath is so sublime, it is so radical and so freeing that only the creator God could have thought of it. No other ancient society had gods that gave a gift like this. And remember, the Sabbath is not just a necessity because of sin. It is irrefutable proof that the God of heaven is real and that he's loving. Instead of 
us keeping it to earn merit with God. The Sabbath is the bond or seal to keep us in grace. Obedience on the fourth commandment should co flow from, a, from the joy of being redeemed. The Sabbath is utterly unique in that respect. Seventh-day Adventists are right to call attention to the importance of the seventh day. But the Sabbath is a lot more than not Sunday. A lot more. Our goal should be not just to have people keep the Sabbath and join our church, that that's a wonderful goal. Rather, it should be to invite people to share our fellowship with Jesus for a day, his day, at his invitation. Lately, I found a number of books and articles written by Protestants and Catholics about the blessing and the joy of the Sabbath. Some wonderful insights written by, let me give you some of the authors, maybe you've read them too, Met Wendell Berry, Walter Brueggemann, and A.J. Swoboda, and Marva Dawn, and Mark Buchanan, and Matthew Sleeth, and Eugene Peterson, and even a recent pope. All written about the Sabbath seeing beautiful, beautiful insights about the Sabbath. But then, of course, the, after, the, after they describe the glories of the Sabbath, they move on and describe how the blessing comes on Sunday. Or one book even said, choose one day. It, it's not, it doesn't matter which day it is, but choose one day in seven to be your Sabbath. And, you know, they're, they're, they're sincere and they're trying to be helpful. But what is most surprising, I'm not surprised that they move it around because they haven't seen the, the divine nature of the seventh day, how God specially set it apart. They just think it's a day in seven. But what is the most surprising to me is that none of these writers ever ask Seventh-day Adventists about their Sabbath. There is not one of the books I've read. They said, you know, I've been reading about the wonders of the Sabbath in the Bible. And, and, and so I'm going to ask them seventh day Adventists because they've been keeping the right day. And they just have such joy. We, I want them to teach me about the Sabbath. Not one book has come out, though they have wonderful insights in the Sabbath. We've been keeping the Sabbath for 150 years. Not one of them come and ask us about our Sabbath. Not one. That's shocking to me. It reminds me of an experience, another experience I had in Israel. Um, there are, are hundreds of synagogues in Jerusalem, and we were living in Jerusalem, staying there temporarily. And so every Sabbath, I would go to a different synagogue because I found out they started at 8 o'clock and the Adventist services started at 10. So I'd go to a different synagogue every Sabbath just to, to see how they kept Sabbath because they've been keeping it a lot longer than we have for hundreds of thousands of years. We haven't even been keeping it for 200 years yet. So I'd go to a different synagogue and, and, on, uh, and Jews don't drive cars and Jerusalem on Sabbath so I walk there's a lot of people walking and so I remember one Sabbath I was walking with somebody and I don't remember how we caught up with each other and and so I was telling him because I always like to tell the Jewish people that I keep the Sabbath and I'm a, I'm a Christian but I keep the Sabbath and so they're always interested in that and so anyway this man turned out to be a businessman and so we were talking and he was I said well tell me about your business and he said well I'm I have about 30 employees some of them are Jewish and some of them are Palestinian and some of them are Orthodox and and, but he said, on Friday afternoon, I send everybody home and we close up for Sabbath. And I said, I go home and I take some flowers to my wife and we have a wonderful Sabbath meal and bring in the Sabbath. And Sabbath morning, we go to synagogue and we do all these things. We have picnics with our friends and, and I catch up with my boys. And, and then, but after sundown, an hour after sundown, I go back to work and I have everybody come back because we're open on Sunday. We're open on Sunday. And I come in all rested and serene and blessed from keeping my, having celebrated Sabbath and keeping Sabbath. And all my employees, Saturday is their busiest day. They're catching up on their shopping and all everything, everything. And they come back and they're all worn out and stressed out and all the stress. And, and I come in serene and rested. And he said, you know what? A month ago, one of my, my, my uh, Arab employees told me, he said, you know, I'm, I'm not Jewish, but I sure envy your Sabbath. Oh, that hit me hard. Does anybody watching me that's not a Christian or not an Adventist envy my Sabbath because they see such, I'm getting such a, a blessing here? That hit me hard. Apparently, we've given that impression a lot because all these books and articles I find about the joy and the meaning of the Sabbath that's found in the Bible 
They never interview an Adventist saying, tell us about your Sabbath that looks so wonderful. Maybe we still have something to learn about the Sabbath. It's a lot more than not Sunday that we've been missing. We rightly draw attention to, to the seventh day Sabbath and put it in our name. We did that. We did the right thing. And in our evangelistic series, we faithfully talk about the right day and we must not stop. We must not stop what God has called us to do this. However, there's a lot more about Sabbath that we could be sharing. The Sabbath commandment in the Decalogue is not a long, burdensome command. You know, it's the longest command. It's got a third of the words of the Decalogue. Some people consider it a burden. Nor, nor was it ever meant to be something that we needed to do to earn salvation. It's a royal invitation. It's part of the proof that God is love. Because lovers like to set special times to be together. God set in place a distinctive rhythm of time. Six days of work, followed by a holy day of rest. God worked the same way, creation week. And then he rested a full day. And I spent it with Adam and Eve, full day. It's easy to misunderstand this or not even see it and squander this special blessing. Even thinking we've earned it by how good we are. But it bears repeating, and I'll repeat it again. The Sabbath was given before sin. It's a scheduled weekly reminder that we are deeply loved. The seven day weekly cycle is the divine plan for the rhythm of life. And it's this weekly structure that breaks away from works righteousness. It should help us break away from that. And yet at the same time, it values work. The blessings of work and, uh, and, and rest are, are come to us every week. We don't have to wait a month to celebrate the Sabbath or a year. It comes every week, this special blessing. Keeping the Sabbath can be a revolutionary act. It divines the parameters of the week and creates a sanctuary in time. It frees us to recognize and accept our birthright as being made in the image of God. Yes, let's call the Sabbath a delight. There's a lot there that we can learn. Amen. Now, pester me with questions. Did I, was it, did I make myself clear? Or is this a, a feel that I haven't been fair to the biblical teaching of the Bible about the Sabbath? I, I think it's fantastic. But would you mind closing with prayer for us? Um, and then we'll open the mics to people who want to ask you some questions. Okay, oh, absolutely. That. Absolutely. I, 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 let's do it. Let's pray. O oh, Lord of the Sabbath and our Creator and our Redeemer, please forgive us for being so unappreciative of the glories of this wonderful day of rest. We, we know that's the right day, and we are right in knowing that, and we have been faithful to share it and try to help people to understand it, but, O oh, Lord, I know my own heart. It took me so long to appreciate what a gift it is. So please bless us this Sabbath, especially with new, a new heart and rest unto our souls that you've promised. And may our link with our Redeemer and Savior be deepened. And may we return to our work with a new vision of, of what a blessing work can be. And then come to you again for a blessing of the, a, a Sabbath blessing next week. Thank you, dear Jesus, for salvation and for the Sabbath. We pray in your name. Amen.